The F-15 EX Eagle II is a fourth generation airplane. You're kidding me. The processes of development of tactical aviation in the U.S. Air Force lead to interesting results. Despite the availability of two fighters of the current fifth generation and the project of a fundamentally new aircraft, the Pentagon intends to purchase many modernized F-15 EX Eagle IIs. These aircraft are technically from the previous fourth generation, but they'll be in service for the foreseeable and distant future. In this video, we'll explain this unusual decision of the Pentagon and the logic of American generals who made such an unusual decision. On February 2, 2021, a new generation Eagle, the F-15 EX Eagle II, took to the skies. The machine, which is almost 50 years old, has received its new birth. We want to emphasize that this is not a modernized fighter taken from a combat unit which was installed in something new at the factory. This is a brand new 4 plus plus generation airplane produced by Boeing from scratch. The US Air Force received its first F-15 EX fighter on March 10th from the Boeing plant in St. Louis. On April 8th, its official presentation took place at the Edgeland base in Florida. Under the $1.2 billion contract, Boeing was compensated for developing the fighter and setting up a production line to produce it. The second aircraft was handed over to the U.S. Air Force in April 2021, and in the current year, 2023, four of these fighters have already been produced, and two more will be made before the end of the year. All eight prototype aircraft will remain in Eglin Air Force Base, where they'll take part in further testing. By 2025, 64 F-15 EX Eagle II fighters will be delivered to the U.S. Air Force. In total, the Air Force expects to receive from 144 to 200 of these aircraft at a cost of their production program of $23 billion. In the future, it's planned to purchase 18 to 24 fighters annually. So where is the logic? What's the point of this decision? After all, there's the F-35 Lightning II, which is successfully produced by Lockheed Martin, and the queue for them is scheduled for years ahead. Why waste resources on an airplane that's known to be inferior? There is logic in this decision, and it's ironclad. In the 90s of the 20th century, the Pentagon thought that the U.S. Air Force in the early 21st century would move to more modern aircraft of the fifth generation. However, the F-22 Raptor turned out to be very expensive to produce and enormously expensive to operate. An hour of its operation, taking into account all associated costs, is $44,259. An example, an hour of operation of the old F-15 Eagle, which was planned to replace the Raptor, is only $27,000. At the same time, the Eagle's as reliable as a Colt 1911 and does not require complex maintenance, whereas the F-22 has a lot of problems after the start of operation. For example, these planes are not authorized to make long flights and are always required to stay within range of runways so that if necessary, pilots can make an emergency landing. Meanwhile, as Defense News notes, Alaska-based aircraft are banned from flying altogether because the bases there are difficult for emergency landings. And all because of unrecoverable failures of the onboard oxygen generation system malfunctions, pilot complaints of suffocation and foul odors in the cockpit. For the same reason, the Raptor is not allowed to go above 25,000 feet. It's believed that at that altitude, if signs of suffocation occur, the pilot can descend to at least 17,700 feet to remove the mask and breathe cockpit air. So the F-22 Raptor program was cut back for financial reasons. However, the simpler and cheaper F-35 Lightning II was not too successful and is still not fully operational. Just consider the fact that the F-35 cannot cruise at supersonic speeds without using an afterburner. The F-35C is the deck version of the F-35 and is not capable of sustained supersonic flight. Plus, the Lightning's been found to have the same disease as the Raptor. F-35 pilots have reported symptoms that may indicate oxygen deprivation. Complaints have been reported of dizziness, tingling fingers, and disorientation. At the moment, the U.S. Air Force fighter aviation is characterized by a specific composition. In service at the same time consists of equipment of four types and seven modifications. The oldest aircraft were built at the turn of the 70s, and the last deliveries of modern equipment took place this year. The task of fighting for air superiority rests with the F-15C DE fighters built until the early 2000s as well as the newer F-22A. According to the Military Balance Handbook, the Air Force has about 100 older F-15C Ds and about 220 newer F-15Es. The number of combat-ready F-22As is estimated at 165. 
The National Guard has about 140 F-15CDs and 20 F-22As. At the same time, the condition of the fighter fleet leaves much to be desired. The F-15CD is morally obsolete and close to the end of its service life, while the F-22A was withdrawn from production 10 years ago. A full-fledged replacement with the necessary capabilities in the form of the promising NGAD fighter is expected in the forces only by the end of the decade. Other Air Force and National Guard fighters such as the older F-16CD or the newest F-35A are highly effective in the frontline bomber role but have limited capabilities as fighters to gain and maintain superiority. In addition, the F-16CD faces obsolescence and production of the modern F-35A is behind the desired schedule. In addition, the F-22 and F-35 are not capable of carrying promising airborne hypersonic weapons, which have now become a reality not only for the Russian Air Force, but also for the U.S. Air Force. The dimensions of the internal compartments do not allow. And if a hypersonic missile is suspended under the fuselage, as the Russians do with their hypersonic Kinzhal, all invisibility will immediately disappear. Therefore, in 2018, the creation of a modernized version of the F-15 for the U.S. Air Force began. In this, America was inspired by the example of Russia, which created advanced modifications of the MiG-29 and Su-27. Like Russia, the U.S. new old fighter was created based on the export twin-engine F-15QA intended for export to wealthy Qatar. That country purchased 36 of these aircraft in 2017 for $6.1735 billion, not including the cost of personal training and logistical support. Some elements of the F-15 EX Eagle II were previously perfected in the F-15 SA for Saudi Arabia. The new F-15 combines the capabilities of the F-15D combat trainer and F-15E strike aircraft at a qualitatively new level and will be delivered in a single-seat F-15X and two-seat F-15EX variants. The two-seat version provides for the presence of a pilot operator in the tasks of which is the control and analysis of information on tactical, ground and air situations and the distribution of the highest priority targets. The one and a half times increases the combat effectiveness of the F-15X EX compared to the F-35A in complex tactical situations when the theater of war is saturated with air defense and electronic warfare of the enemy. The new Eagle will be able to climb to an altitude of 60,000 feet. The airframe is structurally modified to reduce the fighter's effective dispersion area and radar visibility. It has a strengthened fuselage and wing structure, as well as new F-110 GE-129 engines from General Electric Aviation with a thrust of 29,000 pounds. The normal takeoff weight of the F-15 EX Eagle II is 24,500 kilograms. This means the thrust-to-weight ratio is 1.07. This high indicator provides the aircraft with excellent maneuvering characteristics. The aerodynamic qualities of the airframe reach 9.2 to 10 units compared to 8.8 .8 units in the F-35A. A low wing loading of 0.6 pounds per square inch and a digital electronic remote control system provide flight with increased angles of attack. The F-15EX's steady state turning angular rate at low altitudes can reach 22 to 23 degrees, allowing the pilot to match most fourth and fifth generation fighters in close combat on an equal footing. Boeing claims that the new F-15EX airframe is rated for 20,000 flight hours, whereas the first versions of the F-15 required maintenance after 5,000 hours of operation. The new fighter can easily perform maneuvers with an overload of nine units. The vehicle is equipped with a new complex of airborne electronic equipment based on the concept of a digital highway with an open architecture, open mission systems, and Raytheon AN-APG-82 radar with AFAR. The powerful Raytheon APG-82 ASA AFAR radar is capable of simultaneously detecting, identifying, and tracking multiple airborne and surface targets simultaneously at ranges longer than previous APG-70s, which reached 110 to 140 miles, facilitating continuous target surveillance and information sharing outside the enemy's kill zone. A single AFAR radar mounted on the F-15E is capable of detecting and providing fire on multiple targets simultaneously and is equal in effectiveness to multiple mechanically scanned radar stations, said Boeing's Director of Modernization Programs for the U.S. Air Force, Brad Jones. The APG-79's advanced technology has achieved a phenomenal level of reliability, 
By this indicator, APG-82 V1 surpasses its predecessor, APG-70, more than 20 times. The new Eagle will also be equipped with the latest AN-ALQ-250 Eagle Passive Active Warning and Survivability System and a new communications system for joint operations with the F-35. The aircraft will receive an option that's only being considered for sixth-generation fighters, the ability to integrate with unmanned wingmen as part of the Valkyrie and Skyborg systems. The F-15EX and F-15X will also have a digital cockpit with larger displays 11 by 19 inches and a helmet-mounted operational information display system, Joint Helmet-Mounted Queuing Systems is abbreviated as JHMCS. With its large armament capacity, digital backbone, i.e. the ability to quickly process different sources of information in real-time, and open architecture, the F-15EX will be a key element of our tactical fighter fleet and will complement the fifth generation. It's also capable of carrying hypersonic weapons, giving it a new role in future peer-to-peer -peer conflicts, said Colonel Sean Dory, the U.S. Air Force's F-15EX program manager. Proud positively, it's a $63 million Raytheon Tactical Glide Boost hypersonic air-to-surface missile with a planned warhead that can accelerate to Mach 5 with a launch range of 570 miles. Specialists believe that the TBG missile will be compact enough to be mounted on frontline aircraft. It'll be adopted into service no earlier than 2025. And this is still very optimistic, as all American programs to create hypersonic weapons are haunted by failures. Another alternative is the AGM-183A ARRW, Air-Launched Rapid Response Weapon from Lockheed Martin. It accelerates to Mach 6.5 to 8 numbers and is designed to hit ground targets and ships. The launch range is up to 500 miles. The ARRW is scheduled to be launched and deployed on carriers as early as 2022, but the timeline's been pushed back and it won't be in service in 2023 either. But anyway, at the 2020 Air Warfare Symposium Air Show in Florida, a model of the F-15 EX Eagle II aircraft was unveiled with the advanced missile at 22.3 feet long and 7,275 pounds in weight. In total, the F-15 EX can carry up to 22 guided air-to-air -air missiles, mostly AIM-120 Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air -air Missiles, abbreviated AMRAM, or hypersonic missiles up to 22 feet long and weighing up to 7,000 pounds. The hypersonic or anti-satellite weapons can be placed on the aircraft's central suspension. There are options to accommodate multiple hypersonic cruise missiles. This adds up to more than any fourth or fifth generation fighter can take, including external suspension assemblies. When it comes to air-to-surface armament, the vehicle can take up to 28 small diameter bomb-type correctable aerial bombs, ideal for defeating radar and small targets. The F-15EX has a total payload of 29,500 pounds, while Russia's most advanced fourth-generation fighter, the Su-35S, has only 17,600 pounds. And the Eurofighter Typhoon has 16,500 pounds. As the drive notes, whatever weapons the F-15EX may carry in the future, its chosen role as a platform for hypersonic systems emphasizes that these aircraft will not just replace the old F-15s, but will give Air Force units equipped with them fundamentally new capabilities. The new F-15EX is inferior to fifth generation only in terms of stealth. In combat use, it's assumed that they'll complement the F-35 as a flying arsenal, where the F-35 can take only four air-to-air -air missiles. AIM-120 AMRAM in the internal compartments, although the designers plan to bring up to six missiles. But this is still almost four times less than the new Eagle. Compared to the F-35A, which has a maximum speed of 1150 to 1180 miles per hour, the speed of the F-15EX with a maximum combat load can reach 1400 to 1500 miles per hour. Three suspended fuel tanks provide it with a range of up to 1500 kilometers, which together with higher speed and the presence of radar with AFAR AN APG-82V turns the F-15EX into a long-range interceptor. The interceptor can have a range of up to 3,000 miles. In addition, the Eagle operating in conjunction with the F-35 will be equipped with SACMT airborne anti-missiles designed to intercept enemy air-to-air -air missiles attacking F-35 links. The SACMT is a two-time shorter version of the AIM-120C equipped with gas dynamic torque control engines and millimeter wave action radar homing heads. The latter is capable of intercepting most of today's small-sized means of air attack, anti-aircraft guided missiles, 
Missiles portable anti-aircraft systems, air-to-air -air missiles such as Russian R-8, R-33, R-37, or Chinese PL-5, PL-7, PL-9, PL-10, PL-11. This means that even one F-15EX or F-15X assigned to the F-35 link as a defense will be able to carry up to 32 such missiles on modified suspension units, which will allow it to repel more than six missile attacks from fighters or enemy air defense. The Russian Space Force and the Chinese Air Force do not possess such a missile system today. For example, the standard number of guided missiles on the hangars of Russian Su-30SM and Su-35S is up to 12 which does not allow them to simultaneously intercept approaching enemy air-to-air -air missiles and conduct long-range air combat. For close air combat, the Eagle is traditionally equipped with a 20mm M61A1 Vulcan high-speed rotary barrel cannon with a 500-round capacity. Perhaps most surprisingly, the new Eagle will cost less than the last existing F-15E modification, $80 million versus $91.7 million, the cost of operation will be $27,000 versus $35,000 for the F-35A. Naturally, Boeing is also counting on the export of its new fighter, and not without reason. F-15EX is already interested in the air forces of Bahrain, Israel, Italy, and Singapore. You bet to have such high technical and low-cost characteristics. One of the high-ranking Pentagon officials who wished to remain incognito was surprised to say, it turns out that you do not need to throw away an astronomical amount of money to get a really good airplane. Indeed, the F-22 and F-35 programs have accustomed us to the idea that a modern aircraft should be super expensive and super complex, both in design and in operation. And here, we're preparing such a true miracle without any quotation marks or irony. The U.S. once again proves that it makes the world's best airplanes for all occasions. What do you think? What fate awaits the new Eagle? And can it become a bestseller like, for example, the almost legendary F-16 Fighting Falcon? If you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up as a reward for our labor. It'll help us to keep creating interesting content. Also, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Many interesting videos about modern weapons are waiting for you.